Hey everybody, welcome to another awesome episode with Suits and Shoes. And today's episode is both probably one of the most special episodes that I have because it, That's right. it hits close to home. I'm just kidding. And we have the awesome and one and only Andy Elliott here. So Andy, um, man, you got so much going on. I, I, I just toured your HQ. Uh, the vibe is real. Uh, so many times people ask me, hey, Pavel, is he just as chill in real life as he is on Instagram? Uh, but that aside, just the the inspiration you had on me in my life, I'll, I'll get into it in detail later on in our podcast. Um, the, the, the the family, it's like you're a family man, you're a businessman, and you're excelling at it all. Uh, the headlines, the success, uh, just a quick Google search, and you know, and it's not one or two million dollars or one or two employees. Like you're impacting millions of people's lives mm -hmm. and making hundreds of millions of dollars doing it. What does it take to be Andy Elliott? Well, number one, appreciate you, bro. Hey, Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Um, we're gonna give a lot of value today. Um, so, like, there's gonna be some entertainment, but the values that's the number one thing we want to bring. Um, the art of fulfillment and the art of achievement is just something that only one percent of the world gets, and everybody could have it. No. Okay, like I want you to think about what I just said. So the art of achievements is, is money in most people's eyes. If you ask most people, like, what do you want to do? They'll say, I want to be successful, right? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, if you ask people, what does that mean? I think most times people tell me a million dollars. Yeah, so like, that wouldn't make you happy. Look, you got a family, you got wife and kids. If you do, if you chase money and you lost them, would you be happy? No. Okay, so that's, so that's not what you want. Right. So see, the problem is, is that in school, right? Like people don't teach people like how to understand what success really is and success. Truly, this is my deal. And I'm gonna tell you how to get it all. And you, you can try it different ways, but you'll come back to this yeah. and hopefully you'll come back before it's too late or maybe while you're younger and you can actually fix things. So the art of achievement, the art of fulfillment, what I do is that I write down what are the most important things to me in my life? Mm -hmm. You have to know this because you can't determine, you can't decide what success is if you don't know what's important to you. And by the way, like, forget about what anyone else thinks. Listen, rule number one about success is never take advice from somebody that you don't want to be. Mm. Okay, so like, listen, I don't care if you make $500 billion. If I don't want to treat my wife like you treat your wife, I don't want to be like you. If, you, if your children don't look up to you and, and, and want to, want, like, you're their hero, like, I'm out. Like, I don't, that's not what I want because I have three yeah. kids. Um, if you're not close to God, I'm not, at, I'm not telling you that you have to know the Bible like your back, back your hand. You can't say a cuss word. You're the most righteous person in the world. But if you don't have a relationship with God, if you don't love God, I don't want to be you because I want to be close to God. Um, it doesn't mean I'm perfect. Matter of fact, God came for the sick, okay, and the lost, and that yeah. would be me and 99% of the people in the world. So, um, you know, I'm not trying to be perfect, but I am trying to be close to my wife. I want, I want to be marriage millionaires without a dollar. A dollar. It doesn't matter if we don't have any money. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not afraid to go broke tomorrow. Wow. Um, I want me and my wife to be best friends. I want, to, I want her to be my fantasy. I want us to truly, um, you know, like, dude, like, I want us to be everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. I want her to be my battle mate. And by the way, most people, when you say that, they're like, oh, man, screw that. Well, here's the deal. Yeah, we, we have made hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And my team... They all take care of their family and we all have human excellence. We all raise our standards. And if you were to go ask any really successful people in this world that I really look up to, you know, Patrick Bet David being one of them, just give an example, you go look up to him, ask me how that guy treats his family. Ask me how that guy views his children. Ask me how that guy views God. Ask me how that guy views his team. Standards, ask me how that so. guy views loyalty. Ask me how that guy views God. Ask me how that guy views fitness. Okay. If I was to go tell him all these things that I told you just now, he would say, you're damn right. Wow. But if I was to go tell that to the world, right, that doesn't want you to be successful, that doesn't want you to push hard, that don't want you to take good care of your family, that tells you make money, get financially free, how about being free in your mind? Okay? Like, how about doing some of these things that no one even thinks about? I'm telling you, we're being trained by the wrong people. And so, like, that's why, like, when I went on this, so who was Andy Elliott? Andy Elliott was a guy that made a lot of money, uh, learned how to sell, learned how to be a leader. Um, Never had a good leader, though, so I kind of did it along the way. One yep. day, my wife checked me real hard and was like, choose a road, bud. Either wow. become the man you promised, okay, be the man that you said you were going to be, or like, like we're already learning to live without you because you're just on your own damn journey over here. Dang. Right? I never took him with me. And, and by the way, like, she also made some comments, like, you're getting comfortable. You've let your fitness go. You've let all these things that were once important to you go, and you're breaking all these promises to me. And that's not who you are. I yeah. didn't marry you for that, man. Hey, she married me because I was a project, but she believed that I was going to become someone great. And I was letting her down. And by the way, I was letting myself down. And, uh, and, and one of the biggest mistakes that I made early on is that 
I thought she was nagging me. I thought she was like, you know, nagging me, like, you know, become better, you know, be more present right. when you're at home, you know. She wasn't nagging me. She was actually trying to protect me. She was one of the only people that was actually telling me the truth. I've learned this. If you're around people that don't push you to be greater, those people don't care about you. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. If you're around people that push you to be great, those are the only people that actually do care about you. Listen, dude, if you're trying to shortcut your dreams and I care about you, would I let you? No. No. So when I see people trying to shortcut their dreams, when I, when I see people trying to, you know, not max out their full potential, when I see that, that shit bothers me, man. If you tell me you want something and I love you, I'm going to push you to go get it because I care about you more than anybody else. So, okay. so who's Andy Elliott? Andy Elliott is a guy that, like, literally at 39 years old woke up i don't like the old me okay now i will tell you this if you want to make a lot of money you want to have all that money fall through your fingers you don't want to change anyone else's life you don't want to live a bigger person a bigger purpose than yourself then i would say turn this off and go do it your own way but you're going to want to catch this back half which is the art of achievement the art of fulfillment okay i want to look in the mirror and i want to be proud of me which no one really does anymore yeah. a lot of people are numb they're walking around and the reason why everybody's numb is because we're all hurt mm. Truthful, like, dude, I'm hurt. You're hurt. We're all hurt. But the question is, will you turn your wounds into your weapons? And will you go and, you know, help people? Will you be weaponized? Look, dude, I, 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 the reason why I truly think that we're changing the world, like our company, like the Elliott Group, is because we're basically a ministry. We're, we're a group of people that have a bunch of scars. We're all really hurt. But we've all lived for something bigger than ourselves now. And when we started doing that and we started really, you know, number one, like leadership is like self-leadership. Step one is you got to lead yourself, then you lead others, then you build leaders to make more leaders. Those are the three steps. Step one, though, is becoming a leader yourself. And, dude, at the end of the day, nobody would have ever followed me if I wouldn't have started taking care of my wife, started taking care of my kids better. By the way, doing better than most is poison. So some people are watching this like, oh, yeah, I take good care of my girl. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. There are levels to this game. You ever heard somebody say level up? Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay, cool. The only way to get to the next level is to max out the level on you're on, and now you're on the bottom in the next level. So and it's I'm not like, just dollar signs. Dude, dollar signs has nothing to do with this entire conversation. If you don't become your max potential self, if you don't become who you're supposed to become, I'm going to tell you this, you will never make enough money. And if you do, you'll lose your family along the way. Hmm. Dude, I see people right now getting divorced every single day. Wow. You love your kids? Uh, I have foster kids. Yes, I love them. Cool. But, but you and your wife take care of them? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. We'll see how resilient they are if you guys separate. Oh, man. We, we, we'll, we'll see how tough your kids are. You guys want to see how tough they are? Go ahead and split up. Or stay together and then don't love each other just to do it for the kids. You raised your kids how, how to have a cold marriage. Good job. Listen, your number one responsibility is the day that you guys got together, treat it like the beginning, there never will be an end. By the way, that's on the marriage part. So if you're in a relationship, make sure you understand this. The, 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 if there's two people, if you're, if you're a badass and I'm a badass, and I, you're just as good as me, and I'm just as good as you, we both work super hard, and we're both super skilled, and we both have this specialized skill in these things that we do, but I have a badass personal life, and you don't, and you and your family are fighting and mine aren't, and I'm, I'm growing in my family and I'm taking my family with me, I'm going to smoke you. You, you, we, you might hang with me for the first year or two years, but after two years, you're going to crash. Wow. And when your family leaves you and your team starts to leave you and you start to internally self-sabotage yourself and you start to break mm. and demons start to form in your head. And by the way, since the devil isolated you, he separated you, he got you away from good people, he got you out of a good circle, guess what happens? Now you start tearing your life to pieces and over here, here I'm grown. Okay, people can make money for a couple of years, make make money for a couple of decades is what I'm after. That's amazing. Let me unpack this a little bit. I remember the first time I went to one of your conferences and it was probably the beginning of some life changing events that happened in my life. You kept highlighting standards, 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 and I incorporated and made my own version of standards. And some of the key points in my standards list to be in my favorites list, to be someone that I talk to, someone that I hang around with, uh, one of the first things is a family man. A married man so divorce can't be on the table and then it goes on to being a man of faith uh, and then I still have a money quota which I'm going back and forth we could talk about that a little bit later but I noticed just when I made these standards in my life and it, it broke some relationships it put some you know hard feelings between me and some of my family and relatives but man it just 
it felt like my life began to change and I haven't really started putting in the work. Uh, for you today and where you're at, um, how much time do you give someone to come up to your standards before you just say, hey, you know what? You're, you're not a fit. You got to go. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of how we onboard someone in our company. When you onboard someone in your company, if I say, listen, let me, let me tell you the standards that we have in this company, all right? And by the way, this is why I love social media because like no one's coming in to, to my company to apply for a job or anything like that and they're surprised. Right. Like, oh my God, like I can't believe that you told me if I cheat on my girlfriend, yeah. you're going to fire me. Well, they already know that because social media knows that. Because and I, that's I, girlfriend. I that that's not even wife, just even girlfriend. If you cheat on your girlfriend, you're out. Like, do listen to me. I'm going to tell you, and by the way, I'll look in someone's eyes. See, in order to get hired here, let me give you a little method here, okay? So, so there's two things how I'm going to answer your question. Number one, if you come in to work for my company right now, Number one, I would be interested in you. Let's say if I was interested in you, and I would have to talk to you and I would have to feel in my gut and my, in my head, I would have to believe that all the energy and all the effort and all the things I was going to give you is going to be worth it. If I felt that, then secondly, you would talk to my wife. Wow. And then my wife has this crazy intuition. Dude, she's never wrong. Like I've, like I've tried to hope she was wrong at times and she's never been wrong. Wow. And she just has that mother intuition. It's insane. And, um, and then she'll talk to you. Matter of fact, I'm trying to talk you into it. Jackie's trying to talk you out of it. Wow. You know, hey, you're probably not going to make it, just being honest. I know you're good at what you do. This is a whole different deal. You know what I'm saying? This is tough. We've got a lot of alpha guys here. You know, we've got some badass <laughs> chicks here. I mean, I'm just being honest. I know that you're great, but you're probably going to come here and be in last place. And, you know, and, and, and we don't want you to do that. We know it's just going to take time, but you're probably going to go broke for six to eight months. Wow. It's just the truth because you're not as good as you need to be. See, that's Jackie's conversation. And then here I am saying, hey, I know you're built for this. I mean, it's a two totally yeah. different conversations. And you have to pass both. You have to pass both. And if you pass that, you go on to the third. The third is you do an interview with the team. Mm. Okay, what does that mean? So, so I'll have you come up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then the team, they'll interview you. And there's, you know, there's 50, 100 of them that will ask different questions. And, um, and then at the end, I'll say, cool, we appreciate you. Have a blessed day. And um, we'll all get together and we'll decide is that person for us because if that person comes on and I've interviewed him, my wife interviewed him, my team's interviewed him, if we're all interested in him or her, that person's going to make it. They're going to make wow. it because we're going to bring them my family from day one because we all hired that person. Wow. So we're all responsible. Okay. Uh, most companies don't do that and they say, well, I'm the boss. See, that's a problem. We don't have, a, so there is no boss around here. Wow. Everyone in this company owns a company. Ian and Evan, you, you talk to them. They, they own the company. I own the company. They own the, we all own the company. We, this is all of our businesses. Okay, this, this takes care of all of us. So it's not like it's mine. There's no ownership. L leadership is a skill of influence. It's not, the, it's not a position. No. Okay, so um, second thing. If, so, so I would never have that problem having to explain to somebody to raise Letting their standards. Go, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, I, dude, like we've, let, like, we've let like two people go. Okay, like, I'm, so I'm just giving an example yeah. of like, we don't have turnover here. We have zero churn rate in our company. That's huge. If, if you get in, like, people that work here actually think that, they, that this company's too good for them. And you say, well, what does that mean? That means it's just, it's such a blessing. It has everything. It's just sometimes you almost feel, it'd be like a guy marrying the hottest girl of his life. You just feel like, how did I pull her? Look, we've all lived a big, crazy life. Most of my guys in my company and gals are all underdogs. So we all prayed for being in something like this. Wow. So we're just so grateful to be here. We just take care of it with all we have and we protect it every day. And you have a whole company doing this at all That's hours huge. of the day. Everybody's a watchdog. So I, anyways, I just want to say, like, not like our, I've made a company too good for my people, but this company's so amazing. We've all made it so great. We just almost, it's just a dream for all of us. So, like, no one's lowering their standards That's under any circumstance, period. That's extraordinary. I was just taking a tour of a, your HQ, and I see uh, a little private school. I see families. I see uh, such unity and it's definitely rare to find that in today's society. Um, something that I wanted you to expand on is how do you incorporate your family into your work? And why I want to ask you that question, because it changed my life. And so uh, one of the recent events that I attended uh, that you spoke at, I actually went without my wife. Mm -hmm. And I was behind the scenes, and I told you I was without my wife. And you looked at me in the eyes with a serious face, and you said, never come again to my event without your family. And it took everything I had not to cry in that moment. And I came home, and when I was telling my wife that, I got so emotional, and she got so emotional because for the longest time, she wanted to come. And we're in this, like, Slavic, 
community where the wife is kind of like a stay-at-home wife, mom, or she does her own gig, and the, the dad, the husband does his own gig, and like really broken family compared to what standard you set. And it just changed the course of our marriage. And now uh, we plan all our trips, all my business trips, and it's just sparked. Uh, I, I was talking to Jackie before this. I'm like, I feel like I'm on a second honeymoon, just mm-hmm. from a short phrase. Um, where did you get that from, and why is it so important to you? Yeah, well, good job, man. Thank you. I'm going to tell you, that means a lot. Well, it means a lot to everybody. And and you know what? You could have took that one or two ways. When I told you that, you could have been like, man, F this guy. Dude, he don't know how much money I make. He don't know, you know, what I've built. See? Oh, that, those thoughts were there, to be honest. See, but that, that takes me back to 2019, to 39 years old, okay? Um, I used to tell my wife, well, by the way, so let's, I'm going to go back to the same conversation I had with you, that real direct one. It was the same conversation I, that my wife had with me. So my wife says, Andy, we've learned to live without you. Wow. I'm going to explain this to you. Um, we have paid off beautiful cars. Thank you for that. We have a badass house. Thank you for that. It's paid off. We don't owe any money. I got a purse full of cash. Appreciate all that. She goes, I could have got that on my own. Wow. I married you because you promised us a ride of a lifetime. I married you because you promised if we had three kids, you were going to be the best dad ever. You told me because your mom left when I was when you were two, yet your parents have all been married six to seven times. You came from a broken family. You promised me when you had a family one day, if you had the greatest wife ever, that you were going to take unbelievable care of her, that you were going to be home with us, you were going to have a good time. Yes, I, I want you to kick ass at work. You think I want to marry a loser? Mm. No. I want you to kick ass. I want to look in my husband's eyes when he comes home and go, damn, my husband's a killer. But knowing that now he's home with us and he's got energy to spend time with us. That's what I want. I want to see when he sees the kids, he's excited about them and he wants to play with them. And he'll chill off work for a, for a couple minutes because, dude, this is the most important thing in his life. And it shows because that's his action. That's yeah. what I want. I want you to get better every day. I, dude, I want to fall more in love with you. Before we got married, we fell more in love every day, which is what led up to a wedding date. And then we got married and you reversed on me. You got out of shape. You, you literally quit being sweet. You stopped taking me on, um, you know, like all the spontaneous shit, all the variety went away. You stopped dating me. I would it my job to clean up, cook and take care of shit. What a life. Mm. This is junk. And people, they can take it two ways. Well, man, they should be lucky to have such a good man to support them. Do listen. Why do you think so small? That's the problem with the world right now. The abundance mindset is in the trash can, okay? Everybody's so one freaking dimensional. Like, if you can get a good marriage, right, then you shouldn't worry about money because you have everything you need. Or if you can make a lot of money, your wife should have to, you know, or she should, you know, put up with you having to go through all this stress. You know, if you make a lot of money, your kids should understand that their dad's at work all the time. Yeah, how about we get it all? How about we go to work, we kick ass, we're the best at what we do, we don't any, let anyone else be better than what we do, we try to figure out how to kick our own ass every day and get better. We also you know, treat our wife like a rock star, give her the ride of a lifetime, keep it spontaneous, keep it with variety, keep it crazy, date her ass every week, have fun with our children, play with them, make memories with them. Take, do I take my kids? A couple times a week we take them on daddy-daughter walks, like my wow. son, my daughter, I, we buy uh, bikes with them, dirt bikes. The, I mean, I've just bought my son a bunch of Suron bikes. We go and ride them all the time. My daughters, they love to do 20 million. They, they like girls. Like, I play like a girl with them. Like, they like that shit. I'm their dad. Like, <laughs> dude, I want to do everything. My girls show me, show me so much love. They want to play Barbies. They want to go do that. I'll do all that with them. Those are my babies, man. The Dude, when I'm 100 years old and my daughters are 70, they're still my little kids. Wow. You never outgrow that. I can't imagine a father 80 years old and not seeing a 55-year-old kid and, or his son or daughter and see, that's not my baby girl. That's not my little boy. Like, you don't outgrow that. Like, people, they, they lose connection with who the hell they are and what's important. But anyway, so I just, I just decided, like, all these things were, like, super important to me. And um, I just changed them all, man. And so my wife had that hard conversation. That changed me. But I want to tell you this. When she told me, She's like, hey, I learned to live without you. I immediately had this ego thing in me, and I, and, I, and I popped off quick, right? So you could have done the same thing. I said, hey, I said, my mom left when I was two, all right? We were raised poor. And she goes, stop it. She goes, save it, all right? I've heard the story. We're not going to play the victim game today, okay? It's time for you to grow up. 
Either you're going to be who you said you were going to be, or you're going to keep making these yeah. false promises to your family. Well, it seems like you know, and dude, I changed the, the best that of, day. I changed it, instead of a lot of like having the best of both worlds. It's like having the best of all worlds. Yeah. And but for me, it's like Andy, the time commitment. Like it seems like you know, you're an amazing dad, amazing CEO, amazing, amazing, amazing. How do you allocate your time? Are you like putting in 100 hours a week or how do you how do you balance all that? Well, number one, when you take your family with you, your family supports you differently. Understand this, your wife, she can cut your life, she, she can cut your legs off and make you, she can make your life miserable, bro. Mm. Am I right? Uh, I mean, 100%. <laughs> okay. Destroy it to the foundation like the Bible says. She can also build you up, tell you how proud of you she is and make you a savage. Really? Yeah, she can. It all depends on how involved she feels on your shared goals together. See, the problem is, is that I wasn't sharing any goals with my wife. I was making all these goals without her. And I'm going to be honest. If you're, think about this for a minute. If your wife was making all these goals without you and you weren't included in any of them, would you want to see her hit all those goals? Or would you figure out some way to screw them up for her? Oh, man. That's a... See that? Why? Because you and her signed up to do this together. And by the way, most people won't get this. Okay. Most people won't get this, and it breaks my heart because something bad will have to happen for them to realize they wish they would have gotten it. Yeah. Okay? So I would say, you know, like, don't wait for something bad to happen before you change and, yeah. and, and do this. But anyway, but, but when I changed that, dude, everything changed. Just like you said, like, hey, like, this is happening better with my family, with my kids. Dude, once I told my wife I needed her, I was like, and that minute, I was like, babe, all right. I told her, I said, hey, I'm a screw up. I don't know how to do this on my own. I'm try I okay, I ran my play by myself and this is where this play has got me. Yeah. I need you, I love you, I want you. Let's go do this together. Okay, now you can be in business as much as you want, but I want to share every goal together. I want to do everything together with you. I love you. I need you. I can't be my best self without you. When I see you not looking at me, proud of me, there's no way in hell I can elevate. I can't do it. You're the number one most important person to me. I'm sorry that it's easy to hurt the people that are closest to us, and I don't know why I've been doing that to you. You don't deserve that. I know if I got sick, you'd be the only person here with me. I don't understand. I said I'm sorry. I'm a broken person. I'm a hurt person. I don't want to be this way no more. I need you. Wow. And guess what? Boom. That's all she needed to hear. All she needed to know was that she was needed, and now she's a part of the picture. All of a sudden, guess what? I got stronger. She got stronger. We got stronger. She self-developed. I self-developed. I got better for her. She got better for me, and together we became unstoppable. Then we started building. And then, by the way, you say you only got the same 24 hours in a day. How do you do all this shit? Well, if you're going to build a big empire like we're building, you got to build a badass team you got to build a badass team. And in order to have a badass team, you got to make sure when you build someone up, you got to make sure they're going to be there with you 20 years from now. You can't keep restarting over. Most people run like they're going to run a marathon. They run a 26-mile marathon. They run 10 miles. They turn around and walk to the start, start, go back to the starting line. And that's why you'll see, like, all my guys, I make sure that they treat their wives good. I make sure that they love themselves. I make sure they work out and they exercise. So not just work. You, you get in their personal lives. And Bro, married. if you don't get in their personal lives, you're done. Dude, if you don't take care, if you don't teach your people how to lead a life that, that is full of purpose and that they love, you think they're ever going to treat your customers top notch? Definitely you, not. Do you yeah. think they're going to be there in 10 years? Do you think they're going to have a great family life? Have you ever seen people that work for you have, have trouble at home and you notice their work performance really strong? Oh, all the time. And unfortunately, typically that leads to termination. Okay, watch. So I never terminate anybody. Why? Because the number one thing in our company is this. I don't care how much money you make me. Okay? Re Revenue is easy to make. We're going, money's easy, bro. Money's the easiest thing. You changing is the hardest thing. So like if you want to become this great human excellence, you know, high standard individual, take care of your physical health, take care of your family, take care of your wife, your kids, your husband, be close to God, fitness, exercise, look in the mirror, be proud of yourself, you know, treat people better than, you know, than you've ever treated them before. And, and live for something bigger than yourself. If you want to do all that stuff, this is your right place. And Dang. by the way, we ain't never going to change. Here's the goal. Once you change, you can never change back. Never change back. That's the goal in our company. Don't change back. See, because you've had a little change now, but you could change back. Yeah, like a relapse. Bro, who you're around to determine whether you go up or you go down. That's just the truth. 
So we're all around each other. We've created an environment. Whose job is it to create the environment? The leader. And, and leaders make leaders. So I created the environment. There was Ian, Evan, you know, uh, Big Rai, Jacob. We got Danny Klein. We got some of these guys. There's six of us. Six of us, my wife, we created an environment. They were all single. Then they all found girls that they fell in love with, and those girls became part of that environment too. And we started to build our circle bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And everyone who comes in now, by the way, we don't just interview the person, we interview their family. Wow. Dude, when you're a part of us, you're also, your family comes with us. So like, we also got to make sure that we really like your wife a lot or your husband a lot. It's super important. That's extraordinary. Um, you had mentioned God. That's another thing I wanted to, to, to dive in. Uh, one time, uh, your exec team took me out to lunch, and the reason I set up the lunch was I wanted to see how much value um, uh, goes down to your team. Because a lot of times I notice, even in myself, like I, I speak and I set the standard, but sometimes my team doesn't quite reach that standard, and sometimes they excel it. And so I really wanted to see, you know, Andy's talking a lot. I want to see what his team's like. And so your exec team takes me out to lunch. Uh, lunch or dinner? Dinner. They take me out to dinner. There's four or five of us. Mm -hmm. The food gets to the table, super polite. I, I observe like little things. How do they talk to the waiter? Um, how do they carry themselves? How do they engage in conversation? You know, are they keeping eye contact? Are they on their phones? Are they engaged? Are they kind of distracted? And the point that really sold me was when the food arrived, I go on my salad and the, 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 the young lady sitting next to me, she was like, Pavel, we'd like to say grace if that's okay with you. And I was just like, wow, <laughs> like I grew up in a very, very um, conservative uh, Christian like family. My my mom and dad always taught us, you know, you pray before you leave the house, you pray at dinner. And I just felt so guilty. I'm like, I forgot to say grace. And they all hold hands like in the middle of a restaurant. Like we're not in someone's home, like in the middle of a restaurant, you know, busy, like nice, busy restaurant. And they all hold hands and they say grace. And uh, it's not just the fact that they said grace, but what they said, I will never forget. They were thankful for their work. They were thankful for the opportunity. It was just such a, a heartfelt prayer. And for me, from that moment on, I'm like, Lord, I will never forget to say grace over food again. Um, how do you maintain that in such a modern day, woke Hollywood um, kind of like uh, messed up generation. I'll just say it is. How do you maintain that culture within your company? Well, so you're, you're either going to lose your mind to modern day society and you'll find your mind or you'll find your mind in this normal world and you'll lose your mind. And I'm telling you, you tell me which is better. Okay. To fear what other people think about you and walk around and be someone you're not, you know, not, not show people love, you know, not, not go out of your way for somebody. Right. Um, whether it's religion or, or God or being affectionate with your family. Listen, my kids, they're 13, 11 and eight, and they still kiss me on the lips every right. day. My son, who's 13, if he walks in here right now, he'll say, Hey dad, he'll come over. He'll give me a kiss right on the lips. Wow. You don't care who's in here. We don't care. We don't, listen, you can't care. Remember what I said about be careful who you listen to? Be careful. We're in a generation right now that honestly, everybody's hurting each other because they're all hurt. It's changing. This is a time right now where if you want to really earn more money, and we'll talk about going back to the value, you have to increase your value. And how do you create your how do you create more value? Create scarcity. What's the most scarcest thing on planet Earth? Leadership. Yeah. If you can't be a leader and stand up for what you believe in, and you can't like make make the right choices, if if your core values aren't worth dying for, they're not real. They're not real core values. They're not real standards. They're bullshit on a wall. Okay? You know how you can tell if somebody's core values are real or not? By the words that come out of their mouth and by the way that they act, mm. not by what's hanging on their office wall, okay? So like if you've ever been around me, you'll hear that my core values come out of my mouth all the time. Human excellence, high standards, you know, like everything that we talk about all day long is all written in code on all of our walls. If you walk into every office, it says Elliott Army 3.0 core values. 
every TV screen in this whole company. It says Elliott Army 3.0 core values, and they're on every wall. And every person in this entire building from the minute you got here has probably showed you loved. Yeah. They, they probably have talked to you. They have probably said positive things. Yeah. And that's our core values. And by the way, we say it, but also you can tell the eyes are the window to the soul. You can tell that they're living those core values. And, 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 and they've washed their brain since they've been in this company. And they've brainwashed themselves on human excellence. So you said, how do we do it in a world right now? Dude, I don't want to be like none of these other people. Okay. You know what my goal is? Let's my have. goal is to help all of these people. See, when I see a husband and wife walking down the road, not holding hands, I know they want to. Okay. What, That's deep. <laughs> no, but I know they want to. They're just cold. They're just numb. They're sleeping in the same bed. They're miles apart. They don't have sex anymore, except for to get a release. They don't look up to each other. They, that, that, that isn't why they got married. Okay, like I'm trying to tell you, man, that I think it's a time. That's why I told you, if you want to really build something big, the reason why the Elliott Group is growing so fast and, and people, it's like marketing. It's the right message to the right person at the right time. Okay, like, like, would you think about going and buying a funeral plot today? Probably not. What if you didn't feel good and you went and got checked out and they said you could have a tumor in your brain? then would you consider it? Oh yeah. So if you got targeted by an ad and you didn't find out that you might be sick, you wouldn't you wouldn't be a buyer. I see. But if you ha you might say, "Hey, hold on, let me stop. I need to plan this through. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen." It's so crazy, man. It's the right message to the right person at the right time. So to today, if you're cold, you're numb, your your marriage isn't right, you you're not treating your, your your team right, you're not taking good care of your kids, you're not doing these things, but you're directly not under attack at this moment. You've got to remember this. The devil's really smart. This whole world's owned by the devil. He's the prince of this world, right? Right. And that's why you got to understand, like, like he came here to tell you you're not good enough. You're an idiot. You're a piece of shit. You're a loser. We know what you did. You should be so ashamed who you are. You can't do this. You're a fraud. That's all a lie. And we believe those lies, and then we start telling ourselves that lie, and then we're the biggest problem. But but I, I, I really believe... It's on, a, it's on a whole nother level, man, that like once you realize that, man, like, dude, like I'm God's, I'm God's son. Amen. Like, but like he came for the loss. It says in the Bible, like he came for the loss. And by the way, it's not, this isn't about biblical stuff, but it just says the apostle Paul was once Saul. He was a Christian killer and he took the Bible the furthest. Okay. So what does that mean? It seems like God took the people that had the most craziest stories yeah, like the and made radicals. the biggest <laughs> examples out of them because they were the greatest testimonies. And by the way, is a leader not a person that goes around and anybody they run into, they say, Hey, listen, man, I don't know what you did, but it's all about from today forward. Mm. Forget that dude. Let's move on. We got all these people in the world right now that are going around. And when somebody's done something in the past or they did something wrong or they made a mistake, which oh, we all have, when you try to change, all they want to do is hang you on what you did before. Wrong, yeah. And I want to tell you something. Think about it. If you messed up, wouldn't you want somebody to show you grace and say, hey, don't worry about that, dude. That's not really who you are. Let's move forward and let's, let's go be great. Yeah, but, but why don't we all do that? Because it's a shortage of leadership. And what did I tell you? If you wanted to create more value, if you wanted to grow your company, if you wanted to do whatever, the greatest thing you could ever do is build the greatest company on planet Earth. And the greatest company on planet Earth would be this. You taking amazing care of your wife, your kids, your family, your teammates, yourself. It's got to be yourself. you got to become a walking billboard, a human example of what it looks like to be here and recreate and change from your old life to your new one, from Saul to Paul. Yeah. And then show your team how to do it and live the same life and demand that they live it on that level as well, just like yours. And then your company, not just at work. When I say company, people think, oh, business. No, your company, not just at work, but also in the home front, also in the community, operates at that high standard all the time. Yeah. So your company being so high now is motivating all these other companies to also raise their standards. And honestly, politics isn't what's going to change the world. I think it's great companies that changed the world. Wow. You know, Andy Frazella, first form, 370,000 square foot buildings back to back to back next to the Amazon building. Thousand and plus employees. Most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. Go, I go out to his HQ. I go sit down and eat dinner with him and his wife's family. We sit down. I've got about 15 people on my team with me. We're blown away by what we saw. I said, dude, listen to me. 
I said, your company just changed my life. Wow. I just needed to see it. I needed to see it. I watched the way. I watched the way. I walked into the bathroom, right? And, and I washed my hands. And when I was done washing my hands, I go to walk out and I see somebody using the bathroom behind me. And when they're done, they literally grab the towels and they start wiping down inside the sink. They wipe wow. the nozzle off. They wipe everything off. They wipe <laughs> the whole place off. And then they walk out. I... I walk over, he's, he's got a huge cafeteria, turn one of the energy drinks, within seconds, someone will walk back over and correct no them, way. so they're all perfect. Just regular employees? Well, these aren't regular people, these are people who have standards. Extraordinary Dude, employees, yeah. They're a family. Dang. They're on, not even employees, bro, they're a team, they're a family. It's like, there was a kid, I love this, um, as soon as I walked in, this kid walks up to me, he's like 21 years old, and he's like, dude, you changed my freaking life, holy crap, I can't believe you're here, and I'm like, dude, what's up? He's like, dude, I just quit my job making 250 grand a year, right, mm -hmm. to come work for Andy, so I can uh, work in his uh, warehouse. Wow. And I was like, okay, and he's like, dude, I literally, I, get, I, paid, I make, made 60 grand a year working in the warehouse, and I left my 250 grand a year job. Wow. You know why? Andy Frizzella makes everybody start in the warehouse and they have to work their way up from there. Because if they don't start in that warehouse, they won't understand the core values of the company. They won't understand. What, and he goes, listen, I know if I do a good job in that warehouse, I'll work my way up and I'll end up selling for Andy out on the floor and I could work myself to making a million a year. But I had to go back to be in that warehouse because it's worth it to work for Andy Frizzella. You know what that means? That means people will choose their mentor over money. I want you to hear me real quick. This is the reason why we're killing it. I get a thousand DMs a day that go into my, my Instagram and they say, Andy, what's a great order? Number one, they say, Andy, will you hire me? And I say, hey man, I love you, but you know, we're not hiring, but like I'll help you find a good place. And they say, Andy, what's a great leader? What, what's a great organization? I watch your content. Who's someone that lives by your standards that, that I can go and be loyal to? Wow. And I'm like, dude, like where's all the leaders at? Where's, but there's all these jobs and people will work for the boss you know, or the, yeah. or the manager for a paycheck, but to work for the leader for blood, sweat, and tears. A follower is somebody who follows a leader because they voluntarily decide they want to follow him with no money involved because they want to be like him. They want to look up to him. They know that that person can help them with accelerated success. You know, that's the leader. And so that's why I tell people all the time, man, I'm like, listen, man, the company is as good as the, is the leader. And then leaders, they learn how to lead themselves, and then they lead others. And then when they lead others, they teach those leaders how to make more leaders. Yeah. And now you have a, you have a hero-making machine, basically. Think about it. A company that's a hero-making machine. It's just making heroes. Yeah. That's interesting that you highlight Andy's uh, company. He's actually in Missouri as well. We're three hours south of him. And it's interesting that you mentioned that my, my best employees – started out on the production floor. I have a, a young 18 year old. Uh, he was just graduating high school and he started for me three years ago. I have another veteran. They both started in the wood shop building cabinets yeah. and now they hold high manager positions. And in Missouri, we don't have the salaries you have out here on the West Coast. And even in Missouri, both have been offered back to back offers, double the salary, be bigger, better benefits, less stress, less responsibilities. And both said, no, it's not about the money. Mm -hmm. How do you continue uh, to develop and mentor that in other leaders? Uh, do, do, if you were to get, like, say today, you hired someone new, would you be able to put a time frame on what it takes and how you would be able to bring them up to that level of excellence? Yeah. So, well, number one, so we, so by the way, um, this, there's different companies, different companies have, have different things. Um, if you do a good job and you build your company right today, anybody that comes in, the expectation is set so high that everybody, when they come in, they see that high expectation. The new people want to prove themselves and keep reproving themselves to try to fit into that high standard. By the way, that's the environment. In the military, um, you know, like the reason why somebody would die for someone else, if a grenade came on the ground, somebody would jump on their grenade to kill themselves so that the other people that they were with could go home and see their families, knowing that they would never go see their family again. Why would someone do that? It's the environment. The environment in which I would I would do this for you because I know you would do it for me. Wow, dude, that's the leader builds that environment. I mean, this environment is real, just like this all day long. Did you see our pool party we had yesterday? Oh, I mean, it's extraordinary. Like, I don't know how you pulled that off. Well, it's easy. 
Because like, you gotta give everybody everything. And by the way, listen to me, nobody in our team drinks. Nobody in our team does drink. No alcohol. <laughs> well, we don't need it. That's amazing. Dude, our life is a drug. Like, like, like some people like watch social media to get their endorphins firing. We live a life that's like, like we're not watching anyone live. Like we're living life. That life. Yeah. Wow. Like we're doing it. Like, like it's crazy, man. Like, look, look dude, I'm going to tell you something. I built my company four years ago. I've got a hundred people on my, in my company right now. I don't have one person making less than six figures a year. That's extraordinary. I don't have one. And I've got multiple making seven figures. Wow. That's in a short time frame. I'm going to tell you why. It's all by standards. Do what we give to our customers, like the value, the the way. Dude, we're just. I told you, it's a hero making machine, man. Yeah. Um, and anyways, that that's just a goal. But but anyways, how how do you bring someone into that environment? How do you make them great? It's it's impossible not for them to be great. Yeah. That dude, that environment makes them great, dude. When they're in there, they the the one. Okay, most people think they're too good for their job. When people here feel like they're not good enough for their job. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, listen, we only hire career players. Yeah. Okay. Some people want a season. Some people want a game. I'm after career players. What does that mean? I mean, basically you got to be here with me till you die. I mean, it, it's like a marriage. I mean, like, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I don't want to date. I don't want to date people. Like, and I tell people, like, if I was to hire you, I'd say like, let's say you came in here. You're like, Andy, I love what you stand for. And I want to do this. And I'd say, tell me where you want to be 10, 15, 20 years from now. 20, not, not a five-year goal or three-year no, no, goal. No, I want to know 10, 15, 20 years Ooh, from now. And I it, could do 10, I can't do 20. I've but never see, but thought I'm about 20. I'm going to ask that because I want them to go way off for just a minute. Wow. And if they go, well, I want to open my own architect company, I would say, I love you, man. I appreciate you. You need to go find someone that's going to help you do that. Okay? Listen to me. When I married my wife, I, married, I was 26, she was 24. I'm, I'm, I'm 44 today. I've seen a lot of women that I'm sure would do a lot of things my wife won't do. Um, I've, I've seen women, I think my wife's the hottest girl in the world, but I've seen women that think they're hotter than my wife. I've seen, and other people may think they are. I've seen, I've seen all that. I can't turn my head. Dude, when I met my wife, I said, I'm going to be with you till I die. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep investing in this to make this great. Huge. And so like when, when we're talking about like this career right now, cause I don't give people jobs. I give people careers. Like, I want you to be with me until you're done. And I want to give you everything I have. Like, dude, I'm, I'm just not going to give you everything I have if you're not going to be here in 10 years. I just don't want to do it. I just, I want to find someone who will do it. There's 9 billion people in this world, okay? I want to find someone that's going to be here with me 20 years from now. Wow. And, and, and by the way, like, look, man, hey, if I don't do what I say I'm going to do, I'm sure if I didn't keep my word to my wife, she'd probably leave me. And I wouldn't, I, and I would, and I would, I wouldn't. Like, I get why she would. I'm getting emotional over here, Andy. Do they let you on the pulpit on Sundays? <laughs> no, but that's the truth. But, like, wow. <clears throat> but like, so my point is is that our, our people that come here, dude, like, this is the way that we treat them. This is the way that we take care of them. But, but, but this, um, some people say we're like a cult, right? But I want to say something to you because, like, I don't care where you live or where you're no. at. A mafia, you know, the cartel, a cult, a politics they're all cults clicks okay they're all cults the question is are they good or are they bad let me explain what we want we want people to be better we want people to be better to other people we want people to be the example to show human excellence we want people to love people we want people to try their hardest we want people to give all they got we want people to never quit um, we want people to to get better every day we want people to it's called, it's called standards. And so going back to the beginning of this conversation, the beginning to now, it's like, that's what we want. And, and so like we've created an environment, a, a, a culture of greatness yeah. in which anybody that's in it. So even our customers, once they get in, they're changed forever. Just like yeah. whatever you spent with us when you came to this event and, you, and, you, and the time you took away from your family to come out, you went home. You change. And the reason why is because it's a sea of mediocrity out there. Yeah. Like like with little pockets of excellence. Yeah. And when you find these little pockets of excellence, these circles, man, you got to you got to submerge in them. Right. In conclusion, as we as we start to wrap this up, 
I, I think it's extraordinary that you say that. And I wouldn't even say a sea of mediocrity. I think the standards right now in our society are so low. Mm -hmm. uh, so many times I meet these super famous people on Instagram, you know, whether it's 2 million or 5 million or 25 million followers. Mm -hmm. And I go and I get to interview and talk with them or have dinner with them or they come to one of my events. They're, they're, they're pretty depressed. Like, Andy, the stuff they put on their social media doesn't align with what they truly are. And it, it, it's, it marvels me. But anyways, as we continue to wrap this up, um, the reason I started Suits and Shoes is I grew up really poor. And so hand me down clothes. My family immigrated from Ukraine with two bags of clothing. And um, I remember the first pair of jeans I bought in the ninth grade. At that time, uh, buckle jeans were just like really popular. Uh, you know, you could go and spend $125 when $125 is a lot of money. And I worked for months, and I saved up $125. I went and I bought those super cool, fancy jeans that everyone was wearing. And I put them on, I look in the mirror, and I don't feel anything different. And I'm like, whoa, like I don't feel cool. And yet they advertise, and they put all this. And so once I finally, I feel like I made it, I think we were like just past 20 or $25 million. I, I really went, I started buying clothes that I like. And it, it marveled me that what I liked and felt comfortable on was like really simple. And what really inspired me was uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, he has a piece where he launched his shoe store um, or a shoe line, and it's like a $17 pair of shoes at Walmart. So I go to Walmart, and I buy these $17 pair of shoes, and I put them on, I walk around in them, and then I go in my $300 pair of tennis shoes, and I walk around, and I'm like, wow, the $17 ones felt more comfortable. And so tying this into your team and yourself, I've been to events, I've uh, spoken, hung out with your team, you guys are seem like you're always wearing something like simple, a black t-shirt, some, some, some shorts, some pants. It seems like clothing is of little to no importance, just from my observation. So my question to you is, um, what is your guys' go-to outfit, and what is the meaning behind the clothes that you guys wear? Well, number one, I'd be naked if I could. <laughs> so, like, you know. Even at work. I'm not speaking for everybody else, but I'd be naked. Um, look, see this right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the American flag. That's Elliot, right? That's right. that's a movement. Okay, we. It, it started out when you go to open a business, you're like, oh, we should open a business. What should it be called? The Elliot Group, because like everybody's like so, like we don't know what to call it, right? Right. But like, so we did that. And by the way, my wife was smart. She was like, it doesn't. Like Grant Cardone was Grant Cardone. Tony Robbins was Tony Robbins. My wife's like, it needs to be a group. It needs to be a team. An individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. So it needs to be a group of people. So we're going to call it a group. Because I know it's just us today, but later I can see it being more, whether that's our children, whether that's our team, whether it's our team's children, it's going to have to, like, this is going to be big. So we called the Elliot Group. So we got the Elliot. And then across my shirt, what's that say? Elliot. Yeah, it's pretty simple. If I walk into a mall, I walk in anywhere. I mean, three, four hundred people will stop and say, hey, man, what's going on? How? When they see me, they see my face, but they immediately see Elliot. They see black. They see white. That's my brand box. They're like, that's Elliot. My whole team reps Elliot. People say, I can't believe all these guys are running around wearing some other guy's last name <laughs> on their shirt. It's a movement. Yeah. It's like Nike. Elliot's like Nike. Dude, we've got 100,000 people wearing Elliot shirts around the world. Wow. And then on this side... This one says hostage because it's one of our companies that we also are really close with. It's um, extraordinary. And the biggest thing is, is um, we put little sayings on the back, right? Each one of our shirts. So like clothing, like what's that say? Uh, there are two types of pain. The one that breaks you and the one that changes you. That's it. So break or change. And we don't break. So we think about all these little quotes. And we have hundreds of these Elliot shirts running around with all these different sayings on them. So uh, me, I mean, I'm wearing flip-flops right now. People will laugh, right? They've been laughed at my whole life. So, like, that's okay. Um, short shorts. Dude, I grew up in short shorts. My dad was from the, from the Woodstock days, <laughs> right? I was born in 79. And, by the way, like, I work my legs out. So, like, most guys don't. So I'm going to wear short shorts, and I grew up in short shorts. Yeah. And I like, I like, like, not having – I don't like – I'm not a basketball player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like a hippie kid, so I wear that. And I like black. I like black ops. I remember when I started my company, you could either grow like corporate Grant Cardone style business suits and stuff, which I love that. And that's a great look. Actually, I married my wife wearing suits and ties and all that stuff. But I liked, I liked the warrior look. Yeah. I like, I just like that look. And again, it's your life, right? Yeah. Okay. So like, remember this, like no one owns you. You can do whatever you want. So we just decided in our company that we were just going to go kind of black ops look, black and white in most cases. Elliot, rep it, 
anywhere we go, we walk in. One of my guys goes into the gym today. They see Elliot, and they're like, "No way! You guys are the Elliot." It's like it's like we're everywhere, wow. and, and we're multiplying with our customers and everything. And dude, it's it's just a movement. So with me, clothing clothing is just it's just a part of our movement. It's in our brand box normally. It's black and white. Um, we're underdogs. We're broke people with money. Um, so we don't try to operate as rich people. Oh, I like that. Broke people with money. Yeah, like we've been rejected our whole life by rich people. I remember walking into church when I was 22 years old, and, you know, lady, I had holy jeans on. She was like, I don't think you belong here. Really? Yeah, but, like, wow. that's okay. Like, I, I've been made fun of my whole life. I've had poor people tell me I was poor. I could tell they were rich. And they were right. We were poor. But so when I made money or when we did something, we weren't going to change who we were. We weren't going to take the chip off our shoulder. We weren't going to be better than anyone else. We were just going to raise our standards really high, try to be a good example for other people. And, uh, you know, the sooner you can get this, the, the better you're going to get the art of achievement, the art of fulfillment. I didn't get this till I was 39. I had a shitty leader my whole life. You know, make money. That's who you are. That's success. That's not success. That's the reason why I lost all the money I made. I bought a lot of shit, lost it all. Made a lot of money, lost it all. Grew up 50x my income. You decide. Wow. So if you listen to everything we said on this podcast, you're going against the grain of society. Yeah. So I would say don't conform and don't get civilized. And you'll find yourself at the top quicker than ever before. That's amazing. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being with us today. Uh, I think uh, this continues to... Uh, transform and shape my life and my decisions. So I really want to totally thank you from the bottom of my heart for my family and my team. Um, if someone wanted to reach out and learn more about you guys, where would you say is the number one place to find you? Well, you can go to like Instagram, official Andy Elliott. You can go to YouTube, just type in Andy Elliott, two L's, two T's. It's like the shirt says. Um, or you can text. People always text us in. Like we get 1,500 texts a day. Wow. I've got a big team. Sometimes I'll answer a lot of them. Or my team, they're identical to me. You've met my team. You've met me. I mean, we're all the kind of the same, the same girl that prayed with you. We're all the same. We all yeah. run the same. But I would say you just shoot us a text, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. Just shoot us a text and be like, hey, Andy, I saw you on the podcast, and I wanted to ask you about this in business yeah. or that. Like, whatever, whatever. But that would be a way. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andy. Appreciate yeah, you, you brother. Appreciate your team. Thank you, everybody. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications. And then subscribe to the channel. we got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.